a writer, a photographer, on the road exploring a fascinating world in a state of perpetual motion, constantly departing while always arriving, seeking a window into an ever-changing universe. This is We On Traveler. A land of biblical proportions. The Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan. The country's tiny, nearly landlocked expanse belies Jordan's significance across the spectrum of human history. Its strategic location at the crossroads of Asia, Africa and Europe is what anthropologists refer to as a cradle of civilization. From prehistoric communities to the ancient Nabataeans nearly 2000 years ago, from the Greek and Roman empires in the Classic period, to the Ottomans till the early 20th century, and finally, the Hashemites who continue to rule today, Jordan has seen the rise and fall of empires. Jordan embraces its syncretic heritage with aplomb. Amman, the capital city, where skyscrapers share the skyline with ancient Roman citadels, is refreshingly modern. And while the ancient city of Petra, a wonder of the world, remains the biggest draw for visitors to the country, the lovely town of Aqaba on the banks of the Red Sea beckons with its untrammeled holiday vibe, pristine blue waters and gorgeous coral reefs. To the town's north, the towering cliffs and endless sands of Wadi Rum have been a canvas for prehistoric art, as well as recent Hollywood epics like the Matt Damon starrer The Martian. And then there's the Dead Sea. Alive and kicking as a wellness destination since time immemorial. And the centuries have done nothing to dull the Dead Sea's allure. Famous for its natural buoyancy, this hyper-saline expanse of water lies 423 meters below sea level and is eight times saltier than the ocean. Got pretty uh, spiffy beach attire going on here. Don't you think? Yeah, you don't want to cover up a little bit more, you know? It's an Arab <laughs> country after all, isn't it? <laughs> you know, just because you were born like this, okay, and you'll do anything for a tan, doesn't mean all of us are in the same boat, okay? I mean, I'm privileged. I was born with a tan, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try this mud over there, though. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, God. Yeah, as if we need any help to look better than we already do. Huh? Shut up. Well, well, Gino, you should, you should consider coming in here. I know you can't swim, but you know, in the Dead Sea, you don't need to know how to swim because you're not going to sink. The, 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 so much of salt that there's buoyancy for everybody. It's an unprejudiced sea. The Dead Sea. The Dead Sea might not support life within it, but its water and black mud are a dream cocktail for spa enthusiasts. Now a slew of health resorts line the banks of the Salt Lake, where people take a dip, slather on some mud and take a dip again. Who looks more caked in mud? I do, because I had help. Did that guy say, hey Johan, come around here, let me help you? He didn't. I don't know why. Why, why do you think that's the case, Johan? I, have not, I haven't said a word to him about you. He was keen on you, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know what's come over you, but you're just being so funny. <laughs> Genuinely. <laughs> Must be Vion Traveler. Uh, Yon, how much of your knowledge and humor and general savu affair has come through Vion Traveler? Oh, probably about half. <laughs> <laughs> see, that's, see what I mean? He's generally funny, this guy. <laughs> Let's come over him. Ladies, take, take note, please. Take note. It makes no impression on me. But it's certainly that's because on... Mirage knows it's 100%. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it. When it comes to a sink or swim situation, the Dead Sea presents an out-of-the-box solution. You don't need to swim, and you certainly can't sink. Talk about lateral thinking. All right, so folks, Gino, our camera person here, is a non-swimmer. And if you're a non-swimmer, I'd want to use him to demonstrate the Dead Sea. Now, just keep your head above water and lie back, and don't worry about it. And there you go. There you go, Gino, straighten up, get some buoyancy. What, how do you feel? It? Surprise. It's crazy, right? Yeah. It's absolutely crazy. So, lowest point on Earth. And also, because we're lower down, there's about 5% more pressure. So, good for people with respiratory conditions. And they have something called climate therapy, climotherapy in this area. They have several spas here, and people come here for special treatments. The Dead Sea and its salt and all these. Minerals and mud is a certain attraction. 
And I can see why. Skin is so smooth. What do you say, Dino? Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> the Cumberland News. Where the heck is Cumberland? Bullying of medics in a &E. True bosses insist that they shall challenge unacceptable behavior. Shame on you, a &E. What the heck is a &E? County raced as more flooding possible this weekend. Oh dear. Well, Cumberland County natives, you better watch out for the flood. Good day of trading at the British Limousine Cattle Society's sale. British Limousines Cattle Society? Yeah. What the heck is the British You've never Limousine? You've Limousine Cattle? No. <laughs> it's long. <laughs> Now while a dip in the Dead Sea is great for the skin, it's not exactly ideal for a swim. We've just got one night at this fabulous resort we're staying at. We intend to make the most of it. John, you gonna, you, are you going to dive in? No, I'm going to work on my tan instead, I think. Wow. You gonna... it, it, it doesn't really you know, feel like you've been to a, to a sunny place on holiday if you don't come back with a tan. But, yeah. you know. Well, you are working very hard on it, that's for sure. Oh yeah, fine, fine, fine. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't trying to get you to do that. <laughs> I wasn't. <laughs> no, I wasn't. Amman, the capital of Jordan, exemplifies the country's fascinating blend of the modern and the historic. Chalky, box-like homes blanket the hillside at the city's older, more traditional eastern quarter. Here, all roads, as the locals like to say, lead downtown. For a slice of local life, busy souks, street food, shopping, people watching, and just sheer quality of experience, downtown is unbeatable in Amman. What is this? Sand. Sand artists make entire pictures by filling different hues of naturally colored sand in narrow bottles. This is probably the ideal souvenir to take back. Oh, look at all this. Spices. Middle Eastern cuisine uses ingredients that you wouldn't find elsewhere. There's sumac and zatar. A shawarma isn't a shawarma without these. Look at this, eh? You want frankincense, huh? Like, like camels across the desert carrying frankincense. This was the yeah. stuff, man. Yeah, right. Okay. This is the gum you're using. Bother, yeah. And how do you use frankincense? You burn it? No, this incense drain. Test. Taste it. Oh, oh, you can eat frankincense. How is it? Yummy? I don't know. Honestly. <laughs> you don't know? Is it salt? Is it's it bitter. Sweet? It's very good. It's very yeah. good. Yeah. Wow. This, of course, I know. Thank you. Thank you. And if I was running this shop, I'd be eating all day. Today is Friday, which is a holiday in Amman, and downtown is thronging with people having a day out with their families. Street food seems to be as popular here as in India. After all that discussion Mirage had about shawarmas, I can't wait to try the real thing. In Jordan, the ubiquitous shawarma is nothing like anything I've ever had. Okay. This Middle Eastern street food staple has been honed to an art form here. The stacked slices of meat constantly slow roast on a rotisserie and thin slivers are shaved off, rolled into a pita or a different bread if you prefer, with pickles on the side. The trick is less in the preparation, but rather in the spices that the meat has been marinated in. We end the day on a sweet note. Literally, 
Khonafe is the dessert of choice in Jordan and this one particular stall apparently serves the best you're likely to find anywhere in the country. Certainly quite good, but the real icing, as it were, is getting to meet city residents and chatting with them while we eat. Downtown certainly lived up to the hype. So, what brought you here? So, my family is from Mumbai and Gujarat, but I've been living in the US for most of my life. Huh. And now I'm in Jordan studying abroad. Since when? Uh, I came here about a month and a half ago. But how strong is your American identity? It's uh, very strong as well. <laughs> it's a, a strong split. I was born in India. But I moved to the U.S. when I was two years old. So then? So I'm, yeah. So you have so, a Gujarati identity, an American yes. identity, a Muslim identity. Yes, it's a, a big mix. And now here you are in Jordan. <laughs> it's a big mix. Well, it's been lovely meeting you, Nasreen. And you best, as well. Best of luck. Best of luck. Thank I you hope very you much. Time I wish I could stay here for a month or two or six. Yeah, I well, like you that. never know where life takes you. It's a good you way to think about and it. I didn't think I was going to be here a year ago, but here, here I am. Are. Yes. Here we yeah. are too. We are. <laughs> Our newly minted friends insist we accompany them to a local cafe on Rainbow Street, a popular hangout spot for locals and tourists alike. There's going to be some live music, they promise, and apparently the coffee is to die for. Welcome folks to the We On Traveller wagon. <laughs> At We On Traveller, we bring people together. <laughs> now we have a big day tomorrow, but when you've got just one night in a month, then it seems silly to be smart about it. On the road, first thing in the morning, we're heading north from Amman to the city of Jirash. The weather in Jordan is known to be fickle, but today seems bright and sunny, which is precisely what we were hoping for. India, look like India. Well, maybe on the way back, thank you. Within Jerash lie the ruins of Jerasa, considered one of the best preserved Greco-Roman cities in the world. In the footsteps of Roman Emperor Hadrian, who came here in 129 AD, can you imagine, Johan? I can't even imagine. Nearly 2,000 years ago, huh? And they built this just for them. Yeah. Quite a grand uh, welcoming, huh? Much like Indian emperors. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a grandiose sense of self. The emperor's coming. Let's build him a gate that'll last 2,000 years. Jeez, huh? Uh, quite the monument. So what's next? I mean, this, uh, this is quite, this, quite the, the city, huh? I mean, I think this is considered to be one of the oldest inhabited places in the world. In 749 AD, a massive earthquake hit the Levant region and reduced the ancient city of Jerasa to rubble. The 
the comprehensive destruction marked a conclusive end to the Greco-Roman city's golden age of prosperity and grandeur. One of the easternmost outposts of the Roman Empire, Jerash was the most impressive of the Decapolis, ten semi-autonomous city-states that came under the Roman Empire. Historical accounts preceding the quake described Jerash as a monumental city. Two massive temples, one dedicated to Zeus and the other to Artemis, occupy the vantage points looking down at an oval plaza that leads to a colonnade and two amphitheatres. The Romans were the first to realize the power of giving the crowd what it wanted. This place could apparently seat 15,000 spectators at a time. What did you say this place was called? A hippodrome. What does that mean? One of these places where you have uh, chariot races. Cha Ooh, like yeah, Ben Hur. Right? Yeah, exactly. And the wheels coming off. Wheels huh? are coming off. <laughs> Can you imagine sitting here? And, and watching just, and watching like chariot races, and then just hearing the trumpets go off and people uh, getting their throats slit. Oh, it was a bloody uh, culture back then, huh? Bloody. Well, well, things were brutal anyway, but gladiators. And but chariots I don't think this is about that. This is chariot races. There's no gladiator business happening here. Oh, a hippodrome was none of that, huh? I don't think I'm so, Johan. Sure but I'm glad that. you have a vivid imagination. <laughs> you know. Touristy selfie ever done? Well, it's uh, like uh, holding the pyramid, you know. It would be embarrassing, but it's you, so it's not really embarrassing. You do these things. So <laughs> yeah, you took one of those photos when I held the pyramid. Oh yeah, that's a good hey, one. Hey. And we're getting photobombed. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> nice meeting you, sir. Thank you. Uh, uh. The South Amphitheatre is one of two in Jirash. The other one, the Northern Amphitheatre, is still used for performances during the annual Jirash Performance Festival. Here there's plenty of song and dance and some local musicians doing their thing. Mirage is trying to shake a leg and looks like he's got company. What sort of dance was that? You got the dance, yes, aren't you? It's very nice. Yeah. No, like, is there a name for it? Yeah, it's Dabke. Dabke in Dabke. Jordanian, yeah. Dabke. Dabke. Are you Jordanian? It's at, yeah, of course. Ambiraj. I'm Jordanian. <laughs> and uh, what's I'm your name? I'm Shahed. Shahed Dibaja from Jordan. Shahed Dibaja. Yeah. What do you do, Shahed? I'm uh, working with the official TV in Jordan, Jordan oh. TV. Uh, oh, you're I'm a presenter? Present, yeah, I'm presenter and for the morning show, Yom Jadid. Oh, and, uh, and some news. Yeah, and also I'm working uh, as an operation manager in uh, Daim for Media Center. Oh, that's boring. In but really? <laughs> morning and show? And also with Deutsche Welle, DWTV. You're yeah, a celebrity, I'm right? I'm a reporter. <laughs> Let me, let me, what, are the, what are the odds? What are the odds? I need to get a selfie with you. Yeah. I came to Jordan and I met a celebrity. Oh. <laughs> Johan's competitive spirit coming to the fore. I can do the bridge backwards. Oh. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. Can you can you do that yeah, from standing? My microphone might be, I don't know, I can't. But are you serious? Yeah. I can lay down and do that. You can. But I can't, I can't <laughs> just fall backwards and do you it. You can. All right. How do we do that? We Can I do it with the microphone? Yeah, let's try it. It's going to fall because I'm going to go backwards. I'm, I'm, I'm a lot more likely than you to fall. Yes, All okay. Right. Talk One. me through it. Talk me through it. Uh, squeeze your butt cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. All right. All right. Hands up. And then slowly bend your knees. Oh. Oh, I don't know Lift your I'm heels off the floor. Well, <laughs> All right. Can, I go, can I go like sideways? Yes, you can. What are we doing now? Well done, then up, step backwards and lift up. Uh, uh. <laughs> wow. Well done. <laughs> that was fun, but this place isn't meant as much for yoga as it is for singing. There's this designated spot from where the performer can be heard across the venue without raising his or her voice. It's quite remarkable. I'm quite sure Mirage is going to break into song. This thing is crazy, huh? Check it out, huh? Johan! Johan. 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 It's like, it's like, Johan, here you have like gravitas, here you have substance. Here you've got nothing. <laughs> it's, so it's in this spot, it's, an, it's a complete echo chamber. It's like, like being in the shower, really.
I want to sing a song. I want to do it. I want to sing a love song for that couple sitting there. Right there. All right. <laughs> Every time I look down on this timeless town, whether blue or gray be her skies, whether loud be her tears, or whether soft be her tears, more and more do I realize that I love Paris in the springtime. I love Paris in the fog. I love Paris in the summer when it sizzles. I love Paris in the winter when it drizzles. I love Paris every moment, every moment of the year. I love Paris. Why, why do I love Paris? Because my love is near. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. The great temple of Zeus, well, it's certainly great, huh? I mean, if they built that for the emperor, for the emperor, imagine what they built for like God. Right. This bronze grand temple dedicated to Zeus Olympus was built in 162-163 AD. It lies on a terrace above the original sanctuary to Zeus and overlooks the Oval Plaza. Where yeah. does, you know, that's what I'm kind of confused about. Now, Zeus is the he's the top dog in Greek mythology, right? right? Yeah. So this place was a Greek city before it became a Roman city. Uh, there's another temple dedicated to Artemis. Now, right. That's what I'm, I was wondering. Why would they call her Artemis and not Diana? Because Diana was the huntress and she was the Roman equivalent of Artemis. Why are these things dedicated to like the Greek names of the gods when it's a Roman city? At the Temple of Zeus, I try and visualize what life must have been like centuries back, a millennia back. I can't see it, and the camera won't capture it. Then I close my eyes, and suddenly I can hear things. The sound of passing hooves and crowds baying at the charioteers. I feel the billowing sand on my face, carried by the wind from the desert to the south, and I'm convinced that I could smell frankincense in the air. Girash is magic, and no one can convince me otherwise. Hoppa. Quite, uh, Once upon a time, a mighty city, huh? 